it's just criminal, actually, the amount of people that don't understand how special New Zealand is regarding its biodiversity. The stuff we've got here is nowhere else. We beat Madagascar, and Madagascar runs around like some flash Harry with its lemurs and things, but we've just got more endemic things that only, only live here. You're back with Graham Hill's Weekend Variety Wireless. I'm Graham Humphreys, known on the radio as Graham Hill, and I'm an enthusiastic nature nerd, I suppose you could say, about New Zealand stuff. New Zealand's got quite a few different butterflies. They're not the huge, big, tropical-y ones, but they're just as beautiful if, you know, just magnify a little. There's a red and a yellow admiral. The yellow admiral is found in Australia. The red admiral is only found in New Zealand. They're gorgeous things, and they eat nettles. But the problem is that people hate stinging nettle. Oh, it stings! So they chop it down. Loss of habitat. Levels of extinction and the extent to which we're tearing apart um, our systems of ecological diversity is truly terrifying. And the damage we do to our environmental systems is rooted in the expansion of our materialist desires by the demands of economic growth and the requirement embedded within that that we disconnect ourselves and disvalue um, natural systems and what exists within those natural systems. I think it's been a gradual process of disconnection and a large part of it, I believe, um, <clears throat> really began in the Enlightenment period when we began to really fundamentally see ourselves in a different way in relation to the environment around us and came to believe that <clears throat> on the one hand we had the ability to massively manipulate nature and secondly that we had the right to do that. So I think when it comes to the ecological system, we have culturally created for ourselves a monumental blindness. Enviro news and issues on Radio Live. Friends, you owe it to yourself and your family to leave the congested city and enjoy what nature intended you to enjoy. New Zealand has very few native butterflies, lots of native moths, and a lot of them are really cool anyway. Uh, this summer, I went looking for some yellow admirals. They're a beautiful, beautiful I started thing. a I was looking radio campaign grubs, to try and get more nettles out there. Uh, went with native nettles, which strangely enough are not as vigorous as the introduced ones. Joining us, um, butterfly enthusiast to say the least, Vicky Steele. Vicky, good morning. Good morning, Graham. How are you? Good, good, good. Best air conditioning without actually changing the uh, temperature of the air. You see a, one of our native butterflies flying past. It, it's a wonderful thing. But they're becoming rarer and rarer, aren't they? They are, and that's about the risk to their host plants, that nobody wants to have it around. Now tell us about the Red Admiral. It doesn't eat the little native nettle. It eats the big one, right? If it has a choice, it'll go for our onga onga. The big, the tree nettle, the, mm. the, the one that is a bit more painful. And we've got the biggest nettle in the world. It's a tree. It's a huge thing. It's a, you'll get as tall as your house. It's kind of cool, in a perverse way, that um, it's one of our plants that really can fight back directly. It stings. It'll give you a bloody good sting too. In fact, a tramper, I think it was in the 1960s, was killed. We're talking the little native nettle, and it's uh, nothing compared to that big one, so no, don't I, worry. Yeah, you know, I think it's quite a pretty plant, actually. It looks, and it does look really good in a pot. So we just put together a little card uh, with a few seeds and send them off to anyone whatsoever, free of charge, who wanted to have a go at uh, growing them. Huge response of people wanting the nettles. Uh, not a hell of a lot of response back about how it goes, because it takes a, a modicum of dedication. And I think a lot of people wanted to be in on it, but the follow-up, I'm not sure. But in any case, I know there's a lot more native nettle out there, um, hopefully doing well. You know those pictures of World War II when uh, the Nazis invaded Poland and there's those Stukas that come down and uh, bombing the Polish people in, in Warsaw? Yeah, it's like that when you see a pa an Asian or, or an um, Australian paper wasp come in. And there was a little wasp imported in about 1932 or 33, I believe, to control the white butterfly. 
But of course, that doesn't distinguish between our native species and um, our inter accidentally introduced species. So it does a lot of damage. It'll parasitise the chrysalis, and you'll get this beautiful chrysalis, but nothing will ever come out of it except another wasp. You read some really sad stories, like people who've studied them uh, intensely, saying that, oh, of the 150 uh, chrysalises that I saw on this plant, one survived. I mean, do the math. After a while, yeah, we're not going to have any. In the south, where the wasps introduce wasps, they don't do so well down south because it's just so cold. So throughout New Zealand, abundant. In forests, where you've got a good supply of that tree nettle, you'll have uh, abundant reds. Uh, you won't see many in the north anymore. Like, it's not a common sight. You want to go hunting for them? Yeah, yeah, well, find a few up north. You'll, you'll, you'll find some. I've had some here. I had three two years ago, last year, zero. I think in the background of a lot of people's minds, they know about the problems in the sense of um, generically that we cannot continue to do what we're doing for much longer. I think people don't generally go into it in much detail because um, it is disempowering to do so and it's also depressing to do so. For me, in the work I do, it's, it's relatively easy because I have people in contained spaces and, in a sense, I can make them look at stuff because it's a matter of getting assessment for courses. You're required to take a, a look in the face of the beast, in a sense. Um, for most people in their voluntary time, as you know, if you go out to dinner and you start raising um, issues about injustices in the world or where climate change might be taking us, it's an absolute conversation stopper. It's a, it's a dead clangor in terms of conversation. And most people, if they don't have access to knowing what solutions are, will stay away from recognising the problems in full. And so I think um, a lot of the way that we present this type of, of material to people um, is frightening in many ways once you get down to the details of it, but it also leaves people with no place to go. And it didn't seem uh, beyond the realm of the common person to be able to um, help out our native admirals. And I found that there was a group of people that do that very thing. And a wonderful woman called Ange McGregor had been breeding them and she just kind of showed me how. And the how is really easy. In order to breed admirals to help them out, first you've got to have stock, you, know, you can't invent an egg. Uh, so find out spots where they're known to be and you either harvest the eggs or the caterpillars and put them in a safe place. Keep them supplied with nettle, uh, with a bit of airflow and keep it relatively clean and they take care of themselves from there. And they chrysalize, hang upside down, turn into a chrysalis and hatch out. Uh, about 98% success instead of 98% um, being eaten. And then you release them and uh, wish them well. Because once they're a butterfly, there aren't many things that are really going to uh, bother them. So they go out, mate, lay eggs, and you just, it's basically just trying to improve their population base. Instead of going down, 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 uh, it's a bit of a, a resistance war to, to help them. I wouldn't be so bold as to say they wouldn't become extinct uh, because there are always new, um, Predators, one could tip the balance, doesn't take much. An ecologist would probably say, no, nah, they'll be okay, because it's the south. Okay, uh, what about climate change? You'll get more wasps down south if things heat up more? All right, maybe it's not so sweet. I mean, I remember as a child in Scotland, my um, parents being given a sort of large tree to serve tea on with it impaled butterflies stuck on it. Eh? Um, and that, in a sense, is the ultimate commodification. <clears throat> That's um, where we go beyond just um, neglecting natural systems to exploiting them for the crassest purposes of, um, of profit making. And of course, market pressures operate so that the rarer things are, um, the more critically endangered they are, the more valuable they become as commodities. Eh? There are people trying to walk out through Auckland Airport, maybe even right now, with some of our rare skinks in their trousers. Why? Because somebody 
is going to pay a lot of money to have one. They don't give a damn about its ecology. They don't give a damn about um, how they're doing in the wild, which is the most important thing, their home. But if we want to keep them and keep them flourishing, perhaps we do need to move them into the cities more, have more host plants available locally so they don't have to be in the country. And if, if nettles are decimated out there, it's not going to have such a big impact. Yeah, and people can have a bit of an interaction with them. They can be more familiar with them. Kids in, uh, in cities might be able to look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's ours. Yeah, Recognise it for what it is. And if you ever get the chance to see one up close, they're stunningly beautiful. The undersides of their wings, there's you know, a touch of blue and a touch of red there. Um, when they're on the bark of a tree, if they close their wings, they just about disappear. They're beautiful mm. little insects. Yeah. And they're really friendly too. They're, they're quite sociable. One of the things about wanting to breed up population numbers of uh, the admirals that we've got is that people in more built up areas um, all over the place might just be able to experience them. And that kind of raises people's appreciation of what we've got and they're more likely to protect, to protect them and other things as well, just to make people realise, wow, we've got these things, they're neat. Because fewer and fewer people are seeing them and they don't get a lot of publicity. Um, they're not gonna be in our consciousness. We should be incredibly proud of our Red Admiral. It's been dubbed as the world's most beautiful Red Admiral by a well-known lepidopterist. There's people in the UK that import the pupae and raise them over there. And it seems sad to me that they have more respect um, overseas than they do in their, in their own home country. And all we ask for you to do is if you see any yellow admirals, or if you're lucky, a red one, then email us back. Contact just through the Radio Live website. Easy peasy. RadioLive.co.nz, weekend hosts, Graham Hill, there's an email form there, I read all them. You just say what you want at the top so people can to talk about. Yep, yeah. no, no problem. Hmm. Yeah, for a little section I'm starting to call it the farm, because you can do a farm in a small section just scale the animals down. 